feel like we just won them. So this is the first video that I've made solo. And my kid is playing Fortnite in the background. So this is a very candid, honest moment. Um, I'm not a huge fan of being on camera. But an acquaintance of mine said, well, okay. told me that I should start making videos because um, there's a lot of no videos of stuff that, party, like, people are, I guess, experimenting and kind of teaching it as something that is valid or fact-based. Um, so I'm going to be talking about a lot of plants and, and such. Um, my, my whole life revolves around plants. Um, I am a landscape designer professionally. I work for a company. I also am starting my own business this year. Um, and I am a master gardener uh, in the state of Virginia. Um, and literally, I just do all things, all things plants. So if that's something that you're into, you might want to check it out. Um, today, I am basically showing you how I start seeds and a lot of people think that toys? it's too early to start seeds today is like February the third or fourth I don't know I've been working from home um, and I don't actually plan on taking these outside these are actually gonna be plants inside um, and I'll tell you about that story in a second but um, so there's a few things that I'm trying and I'm basically focusing uh, no. my growing space on stuff that I know is more container friendly oh, or supposed to be container called. friendly. So some varieties I am trying new this uh, this year um, and oh. others I've grown before. Um, you didn't um, see the toys that it's cool, Fortnite it out, whatever. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to start seeds and often like you'll hear you'll hear some opinions that you know they'll say it like this is like the one way you do it but there's so many ways to start okay. seeds i'm just going to tell you how i start some of my seeds and i don't start them all this way but i start certain ones this way um so basically um i take a uh sandwich bag and i'm sorry i know this isn't sustainable to some um but you can reuse this <laughs> i will be reusing them um, but I take a sandwich bag, and um, I write down on the sandwich bag. I, like, put it in a little grid so that I can fit multiple varieties in one little sandwich bag. And um, I write down what I'm going to grow. And then I get, a, like, a damp paper towel. Not, like, not wet. Like, if you can drench the water out, like, that's too wet. Just, like, you know moist a moist paper towel <laughs> and um, I cut that up into four sections and um, then I put the seeds that I want to start growing in there and fold it over and stick it in the sandwich bag um, if you look closely which I don't know how close we can get here you can actually kind of see that they are uh, I don't know. I'm winning, I'm winning, I don't know if I'm I can. Winning. I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can kind of see that they're starting to grow. They've been in there for only like a few days. Um, this is my favorite way of starting seeds, I would say, because like they, um, it's just like foolproof. If the seed is valid, like if the seed is alive, it's gonna grow in in this uh, in this way. Other times, like. When other oh, ways of starting seeds, um, for me, it's a little bit more risky, and there's there's some things that you can accidentally do, like, you know, dry out soil or something like that, and oh. then it um, kind of ruins that seed. So this way, um, if I forget about it, or yeah. I was just too busy to address it, like, my little seedlings aren't dead. So I wait till they've been in here for a little while, like a, like a few, a couple weeks, you know. I wait till I start to see some really good growth, root growth on them. And then I take them out of the package. Um, 
I just cut cut them out rather don't pull them don't break the roots or whatever I just cut the um, paper towel from around them and then I plant them in my system so uh, these particular plants which I'm gonna go over in a second um, these are going into a hydroponic system and hydroponics is kind of a fun favorite of mine but I grow lots of different ways and throughout these series okay. of videos I don't know if I'll be doing more hopefully um, if I can get used to this seeing and hearing myself thing um, <laughs> then I'll talk about a lot a lot of other stuff because I do a lot more than indoor growing um, but I do have a passion for indoor growing because there was a time in my life where I felt I, I, I always love plants but I, I felt very limited by what I could and could not do and um, and then I learned a whole lot and I found out that those limitations were kind of bullshit and um, I could do like anything you know I, I could grow almost anything anywhere if I just kind of gave it what it needed so um, I do teach other classes and I no you can't get in the video <laughs> and um, I teach uh, classes with uh, Virginia Master Gardeners as well um, and there you're gonna see a lot more uh, reserved Stephanie and although I'm still kind of reserved um, you know I could say whatever yeah, yeah. I want to say <laughs> um, so let's talk about the stuff that I'm gonna be starting no, so I don't know if you can see it or read my chicken scratch. So I have a container uh, tomato super bush, a tumbler tomato hybrid, a tomato bush cherry, cherry falls hybrid, tomato bush red pride hybrid. I started some Peruvian ground cherry inside um, only because I don't know like what that what's gonna happen with that one actually because um, I have grown it before in uh, raised beds and it was like candy like and they didn't eat the potatoes they didn't eat the tomatoes they they went after this thing like like it was like the best plant to ever eat so yeah, the bugs the bugs went after it um so i kind of want to try it inside and see what happens we'll see um i'm also growing some stuff for the teaching garden that um where we um show other people how to grow in a real life scenario. Um, so I have some of that in here as well. Um, I've got some spinach and some marigolds and some purple moon kale. And you can kind of, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you like that they are starting to sprout. If you're into this kind of thing, you're into it. And if not, you know, sorry for boring you. Um, Got some uh, romas, which are one of my favorite tomatoes. Not for taste, just because they're like so petite and fun and not as messy. You can cook with them, they're great. Um, also trying uh, Tomato Bush Ace 55 for the first time. Um, Baxter's Bush Cherry Tomato. So a lot of these tomatoes are um, hybrids, and I found that a lot of the determinate tomatoes are hybrids. I think I have like three that are actually heirloom. Um, the difference between that, I, I think you probably want to hear that. Um, so like, my kid's laughing at me. Um, basically the heirloom tomatoes are like tried and true for a long time versus the hybrids are kind of a mix up that could potentially turn into something else. So, we'll see. I'm not anti-hybrids. Um, heirlooms are nice, too. <laughs> Just, I, I kind of grow a lot of different things. Um, I like to try, I don't know, I like to try tomatoes. When I first started growing, I thought it was kind of cliche. They're like, everyone's growing tomatoes, you know what I mean? And I would grow a lot of other different, like, weird things, like pineapples and stuff like that, which, growing pineapples, is, it, it's fun, but... Um, it's a commitment because they need a lot of light and they like it nice and toasty and they're hungry and 
I don't really have, I don't really want to devote my space to that anymore, but it, you know, it was fun while it lasted. Um, but when I first started, like, tasting those really good tomatoes out of my garden, that did it for me. So then I started trying a lot of different types of tomatoes. So I am a big fan of tomatoes. Um, I also grow other stuff like peppers and, you know, cucumbers and, and such. All these, all these fun, wonderful things. Um, I am a big fan of edible food. Wait. Okay. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of growing food. I'll say it like that. Um, but I also grow some other stuff too. Like, um, I've got a lot of house plants now. Uh, we'll go over that kind of stuff later. Um, and, you know, I'm a designer, so I do like to try out flowers and, and lots of different things. Um, but I am very conscious of what type of plants that I will suggest or put out in someone's landscape. Um, because I am not a fan of invasive plants and I see the damage that it causes. I often go to a new client's house and I walk into this huge mess of, and I, when I mean mess, I don't mean just the untidiness, because that part, you know, yeah. to each their own, I don't really care about that. I have to, but I don't. Yeah. You know. um, but when I, when I walk into a huge mess, I mean like yeah, dead trees all over the place. Um, and it's real hurtful, kind of, like, when you walk into that and it's just, like, death everywhere. Um, and, but, and, like, the only thing alive is, like, English ivy all over the place, uh, Japanese honeysuckle and stuff like that. And, you know, it, you can see how these invasive plants really destroy a landscape. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm real careful about what I plant. So, within these videos, if I continue to make these videos um sometimes i'm going to take you on a job site and you can kind of see some of this stuff for yourself um and sometimes it'll just be like you hanging out with me in my room and this is going to take some getting used to because i'm not a huge fan of being on camera or clothed <laughs> in my room so whatevs um so you know I don't know hopefully some good things will come out of this um for the folks that don't even make videos i'm making videos and we'll see what happens um but hopefully hopefully i can give you some good info and uh you might hear some fortnite in the back <laughs>